All right, today we're checking out a lightweight, tactical, affordable, but most importantly, first focal plane scope. This is called the Sniper Elite 6. It says here it's a true one power scope optic, but then you can also zoom into six power. Now, first focal plane, and what that means is that when you zoom in and out, the value of your mill dots stays the same. So if you have a second focal plane scope, which is what most scopes used to be, then you'd want to be shooting it at the same magnification most of the time. But if you did change from, from, let's say, 6 to 12 power, you have to do some math to figure out exactly what your holdover would be. Not so on a first focal plane scope. It stays the same at all power levels. It says it's a LPVO scope, or low-powered variable optic. It's designed for close and medium-range shooting. Now, we're reviewing this on an air gun, but you can put this on a normal firearm, no problem. With a 1 to 6 magnification range, the optic can aim at targets from 10 to 300 yards quickly and accurately. So the whole thing's made of CNC machine, single piece aluminum alloy construction, anti-reflective multi-coated lens. It's completely nitrogen filled and O-ring sealed tubes that ensure waterproof and fog proof performance. First focal plane, fast focus eyepiece, that's for sure. I love the reticle. ED glass and multi-coated lenses. It's got the illuminated reticle with six stages of red illumination brightness and see-through cap turrets. The field of view in degrees is 24 to 4 degrees field of view. The scope weight is 640 grams. The length on it is 280 millimeters. It's got extra low dispersion glass, 30 millimeter tube, and it says the objective diameter is 24 millimeter. So this company says that they focus their attention on developing high quality optics based on current market and customer needs. These guys have been super, super cool. They sent me the scope, I'm telling you guys, like a year ago. And I've just had so much stuff going on with guns I had to review and all that that I couldn't get to it. That whole time, they have been so nice to me. They watch my videos and leave nice comments on them. So it tells me that they're good people. And I appreciate their patience. And I also appreciate all the great comments that they left on my videos. Thanks for watching my videos, guys. Here's that review that I promised you. It says, exceptional optical structure highly promotes clarity and brightness of the sight picture, making the lens razor sharp. I really like the way the illuminated reticle dial works. So anytime you see a dot, that's the off position. So if I turn the dial up, then I'm on one. And if I turn it up again, then I'm in an off position. And it has an off position between every single setting. So if let's say I like to use setting number four, I don't even have to remember. I can go either down or up to turn it off. So that's a really cool feature. It's got nice positive click adjustments for your windage and elevation. So you don't have to loosen anything. Here's a look at that reticle. Now this ring on the very back that says plus and minus zero, that's actually to focus the reticle to your eye. So you want to aim that up at the sky and then get it so that it's nice, sharp, and clear. And then you're ready for the next step. All right, I'm going to put this bad boy on my FXM3. While I'm doing that, though, check out how big this drone is. Yeah, it's huge. There's my hand next to it. It's huge. It'll carry anything you want. Those legs, like, fold up when it goes up. That's the GPS right there. And it's got a bunch of goodies in here, under here too. So this will actually carry like a giant camera on it. But for now, I'll be taking that off and I'm just gonna put something else crazy on there. Not sure what yet. That's me and my brother when we were uh, child soldiers. We're actually time travelers too, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. So you put this on a level surface which this is not necessarily level right here, but a good level surface. And then lots of times you can just eyeball, you know, get this like straight up and down. Kind of have this square, like about right there. But then I'm going to show you how to check it for sure. But we're going to leave these loose because I just put those rings back on there. These are actually different rings. These are shorter ones. What happens is my, F, my FX No Limits rings finally broke one day because... Scope rings aren't made to go on and off scopes like 150 times. So finally they snapped and I didn't have anything to film airgun channel videos with. 
Of course, you can go down to the gun store and buy some scope rings, but they're never tall enough. So I took these out of the uh, Aries box. This is like a year ago. <laughs> and the rest is history. Anyway, I'm not taking these off my Helix because we've shot a lot of really good groups. But I'm going to show you right now how to uh, level your scope and get it perfect. So I'm going to leave these loose. Now you do want to tighten your scope rings, but you don't want to tighten them like as tight as you can. You just snug stuff up and then maybe give it a little teeny bit more. And the reason that you don't crank down your scope ring screws like I'm doing right there is because there's actually lenses inside the scopes that move back and forth. So if you jam this down super, super hard, you may um, impede the operation of the scope. Anyway, though, yeah, I'm leaving these loose because I'm going to level my crosshairs perfectly. Now you are going to need a scope rail level for your gun. And there will be a link in the description where you can get one for like $10. Or you can see the one that I'm using. It works pretty good. Okay, so I was going to put this on my M3. But then I was like, OMG, that thing matches the stock to my air arms perfectly. Look at that. So this is going to be uh, beautiful. Even more beautiful than it is now. Uh-oh, I forgot. Darn it. Wrong rings. But you can see how uh, having a whatever color scope that is it might come in handy sometimes definitely look good on like your uh wait a second i think i have my m3 has the brown on it so let's let's check that out by the way you guys the uragan 2 is on its way to me right now in 25 caliber so buy your fx impact at pyramid air use the link in the description buy your uragan at talon tunes yeah I forgot, I got the spicy one. Oh man, that's a beautiful machine right there. All right, that's not on there yet, but me likey. It's not a perfect match, but uh, I think it looks a little cooler than a black one, that's for sure. And don't forget how stylish looking it is. So this would be perfect for blasting targets at, uh, I'd say up to 50 yards, no problem. So you get your eye relief right, and you try to line your Picatinny's up like that. If it's a little bit loose in there, which is what you want it, you want to actually bump it to the front. Perfect right there. Okay, so this is the kit that I use, and I don't even like it. I, I, I don't use this at all. I think I did try to do it one time, and it came out really bad. Because the system I'm doing right here has never failed me. All right, so you get your little level right here. It doesn't have to be a wheeler. And then you got to find a flat place on the gun. There's plenty of them on the M3. We'll get our M3 level. Boom, there it is. So our M3 is level. So this is only like under 10 times I've shot my M3, but the genius of the M3, come on, focus. The genius of the M3, it's got a nice flat spot right back here where you can have your scope on there and totally see if your little level is level. And also you can square this part this way by just button right here. So just uh, part of the accuracy package that is the FX M3. Anyway, I'm going to get that perfect off camera. Actually, you guys can't tell, but that's perfect right there. So then we're going to look through the scope. So I'm not going to try to do it like on camera. Basically, what you're doing is you just aim your stuff at the nearest windowsill or door jam. My gun's level right now, so I would level my crosshairs, and there's even some lines on my door jam that I can uh, really get that perfectly level. And so... You know, put your scope on the lowest power setting. That's it. So let me get this leveled up and I'll show you guys. All right, I'm level and level. So I actually line it up with a line that's in my trim. But basically, if you can't tell it's crooked, that means it's straight. So like if you can't tell, is it going to the left or the right? That means it's straight. So anyway, I got that thing bang on and that's how it's done. So when you have your honeycomb front cover on there, your scope cover still fits on there, as well as the back one right here, snaps right on and off, so I'll keep those on. Now let's go shoot this bad boy. So these are actually some pellets that were really jacked up. I got them from Poland off eBay, and the first ones I ordered were really good, and then I ordered six and they sent me, if you look closely, every single one is bent. Like, the guy took all his bent ones, saved them all, 
and then filled up 610. So good for him. He must have done a lot of shooting. I'm going to run these through the pellet sizer. This is my 22. It's 5.53. You can get any size you want. So you just drop your pellet in here like that. Hit the plunger and out comes a lot better pellet than you put in there. There it is. Look at that round skirt. So let's just do a, I'm just going to pull one out of here. Here you go. This one's pretty messed up. I'm going to show you. You're putting them right in here. Like that. See, he's jacked up right there. And out the bottom comes. Look at that. That's pretty darn round. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that with a whole magazine, which is a ton of bullets. This thing holds like 30, I believe. So that should be enough to film the whole video. All right, there's the outside world right there. The sun's right in my face, but we got some very clear, wow, I like that reticle design. The dot right in the middle. This is just like my helix, kind of, with the dot. And I like those uh, double lines on the side. Go ahead and shoot this flower. Just kidding. That fence right there is probably, I don't know how far. Oh, I see. That little thing on top is for, whoa. The thing on top is for a handle, so you can do that. Now we're zoomed in six times, I believe. We were on like one times before. We zoom back out. Sorry about the shaky scope cam work. So that's actually one times. We can go all the way in. So you get, you know, the big field of view right there. You can zoom all the way in. It's got a pretty stiff zoom thing, so a handle would be good. And that's going to be your six times. Wow, you can mess some stuff up with that. Sun's in my face, so I don't know how this is going to come out. But that is, I believe that's a 50-yard tree. Yeah, that's a 50-yard tree right there. So that's what it's going to look on, like on six power. 50 yards away, bop bop, dead squirrels, and yep, that right there is the 35 yard tree that I used to use when we first started Air Gun Channel up here. So that's cool. I got this free off the side of the road, so I figured I would maybe make a video about refinishing it. A video like that can get millions of views. Anyway, my M3 is ready to rock and roll. I do have to leave it inside. I got the Shogun on there. Old school. Boom. Smooth face. Old school. Anyway. I gotta leave it in here till I get all set up. Because if the Amazon driver shows up. It might be a little bit intimidating seeing that on the table. Anyway. Hiding in the bushes there's some bullseyes. Looks like they're at a very special. 30 yards away. Okay, so that's 30 yards right there, and we are on 6 power, 5 power, 4 power, 3 power, 2 power, and we're not going to make it down to 1 because my side shot bar is in the way, but that's fine. So this is 2 power right here. Hmm, I think I'm going to be looking at probably 4, but. So that's three power right there. It's pretty okay. I don't know. Let's see here. Forgot I'm not sighted in at all. So let me just shoot right here. Okay, not bad. I'm gonna actually go up to six power because. All right, now I can see what's going on. <laughs> I'd say we're sighted in. One shot sight in, baby. Very easy to see that dot right in the middle of bullseye on six power. All right, that right there was uh, five shots, so pretty good. Check out some of my targets. All right, this is a good target for 100 yards. That is a three quarter inch hole, I believe. And we got a super fresh holder right there, as well as a really awesome stand. So this actually, this is actually a clip. So that clips on like that, it ain't coming off. 
and I think you know the rest. And then this one, I think some of you have seen before, but this right here is a uh, basically a know your limits target. So this guy's real teeny beanie. He's like the size of my fingernail. He is three eighths or a half inch. Focus. Then it goes up from there. These are like really thick, so you can't hurt them. You can sh shoot a dirty 30 at this and it'll flick them up. And then you just hit this with at least a 22 and it's gonna release that stuff and come back down. Haven't painted it yet, let's test it out. With the Shogun on here, this gun is just like overly quiet. It's supposed to be two different tones, but. Anyway, this is a lot easier to ascertain Shooting sideways that time. <laughs> Nicely done. Right on. Hey, buddy, where's the other one? Someone's missing. There he is. Thanks for joining us, buddy. I'm getting, getting too sloppy there. Oh, that was it, you guys. I love the way that the target went up and also gave us the old uh, cowboy ricochet sound. So use the link in the description to find out more about the scope. On their Amazon page, they actually have a whole bunch of information as well as a cool video and all the stats and everything you'd ever want. Also, if you use the link in the description, I'll make 2% on anything you buy on Amazon. So definitely do your Christmas shopping this year through an Airgun Channel Amazon link. All right, I really appreciate y'all tuning in. I appreciate everyone who has been using the links for the last couple of years. And real quick, also here's a look at that illuminated reticle. It looks like it lights up the whole thing, which is pretty cool. All right, till next time, happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.